Our next speaker, Richard Green, is an attorney, political and communication strategist, and author of the Prentice Hall book called Words That Shook the World, 100 Years of Unforgettable Speeches and Events. Richard founded a nonprofit educational organization to find and cultivate the next leaders of America. Called the Master of Charisma by the Sunday Times of London, Richard Green is considered one of the leading communication coaches in the world. He now hosts his own show called Clout on Air America Radio. Yeah. It can be heard from 8 to 10, Monday through Saturday. 8 to 10 in the evening, that is. Thank you, and, and uh, we're very, very proud to have Richard Green. So why isn't everybody home listening to my show right now? <laughs> we, we Air America needs the ratings. Um, I want to thank Christine for your courage, and Lori, and everybody else up on the stage. And I want to thank you all for sharing with me your appreciation that somebody from Air America would actually be standing here. I, I just want to share a couple of comments about that. Um, first of all, I think that this is, in fact, a very historic event that we're at right now, and a very historic moment in our history. I mean, in America, in America, we, we are either, we're either going to seek out and pursue the truth, or we're not. And the media is either going to seek out and pursue the truth, or it's not. And I am very honored and proud to be part of Air America, which while it may not go as far as some of you want it to go, still is one of the few places where, in fact, we do. Whether it's Randy Rhodes or Tom Hartman or Lionel or Rachel Maddow, um, where we do actually give a darn about the truth and we try to share it to the best of our ability to do that. <laughs> because if we lose the ability to have a free media, given what else we've lost, We've lost everything. And so I ask for your support for the continued existence, and to some extent it has been hanging by a thread, the continued existence of Air America and Pacifica Radio and all of the other, one well, of the very few, sources of information that are in fact free and not controlled by people who have different agendas. And I have a couple of things that I want to share. One is a, a phrase that resonates. How many of you have seen Zeitgeist, the movie? Uh, very powerful. And uh, there was a phrase in there that said, there are those who see authority as the truth, and there are those who see truth as the authority. And I think that where we come down on that question is very clear. And I want to share just a little bit about my journey. I remember not long after 9-11 happened, someone I greatly respect, and believe me, even at that point, I was not a fan of George Bush, but someone I greatly respect. In fact, he was a member of the Green Party. He was the mayor of Santa Monica, kind of Mike Feinstein, some of you may know of him. Uh, we were talking, and he said, Richard, uh, the buildings didn't come down because of the airplanes. They were blown up. And I've known Mike for 20 years, and even with my hating George Bush, even with my hating the administration, not trusting it as far as I could throw it, I looked at Mike, and I said, that, that's complete bullshit. There's no way. But, you know, thank you for sharing. <laughs> And a year and a half later, I just happened to be at a birthday party for a friend of mine, and I was sitting, it was all meant to be, I'm sure, at the end of the table, and there was a guy there who was very involved in 9-11 Truth in Los Angeles, and he, we started talking. And an hour and a half later, 
after every single question that I as an attorney had asked this guy was answered with incredible intelligence and knowledge and wisdom and insight and not backing down on any question, I went, and I think this is an official quote, holy shit. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please forgive me for that. I'm sorry? It's appropriate. Um, and I went home and stayed up all night. And I googled and searched the internet and my head was spinning. And it was like, oh my god. Oh my god. I felt like I walked into a brick wall that looked like it was clear. How many of you have gone through that experience? And here's, here's the point. Hold on. Oh, some of you may be smarter than me. Here's the point. It is a psychological and spiritual journey. And we look at people like Bill Maher, and we look at people like Frank Rich, and we look at people who are diehard Democrats and diehard progressives, and we go, why in the world don't you see what is so frickin' is that better? Clear. <laughs> and I have to tell you, I, you, you heard what Les was saying. I mean, I teach presidents and prime ministers and CEOs and Hollywood celebrities how to stand up and give speeches, and I'm pretty good at arguing for my view of reality. And so I spent a year and a half, and I spoke to senators, and I spoke to chiefs of staff of congressmen and senators. And even about two years ago, I even spent an hour speaking to Dennis Kucinich. And I think Dennis... Ah, I think Dennis... Hold on. I think Dennis has, has evolved in his journey with respect to that. But two years ago, he wasn't there. And not one person, not one person with all of my persuasive powers and all of my energy and just re waking up and just with great intensity, not one person changed their mind as a result of my enthusiasm and my information. And I went, what's going on? What's going on? And I would have let it go, and I would still let it go, but for the fact that there is this country called Iran. And but for the fact that still for another year and a couple months, we have people that I believe to be criminally and legally insane running this country. And George Bush, and especially Dick Cheney, scared the shit out of me. And I believe that unless and until the majority of America understands what you understand, that we are not safe from yet another pretext for yet another war that could, in fact, destroy our species. So, the suggestion is, very strongly, that we support with all of our might what Les is talking about and this new investigation but that we do it without anger, we do it without animus, we do it without laying blame at the feet of people like Bill Maher or Frank Rich or anybody else, because I do believe that they are doing the best they can. No, they're not. <laughs> no, okay, okay, they're not. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me finish. It's really easy, it's really easy to be angry. It's yeah, but let me, let, 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 please, let me, please, please. I've studied a lot of psychology, and I think it's critical that we understand that. John Dean came out with a great book where he talked about the authoritarian prototype, the authoritarian mindset. And if you understand that there are people, for better or worse, because of their childhoods, because of the way they were raised, because of their fear, because of their basic existential insecurity, that there are in fact people 
who look at the government, the president, the vice president, as authoritarian figures, as replacements for a mother or a father that either they had or that they didn't have. All I care about is saving this democracy and saving this country and this world for my daughter and for our next generations. So we have to do that. So we have to be really frickin' smart. And I think it's essential that we understand why is it that this room is not Madison Square Garden with 20,000 people. It will be. There, I understand it will be, but only if we do it right. And on Air America, I am doing every single thing I can. Good for you. Thank Change you. Change the language. Stop uh, using eschatology. Uh, 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 Ma'am. Come on. You gotta stop. You gotta, you gotta clamp it up. And they're on your side. But I want you to know, I want you to know there are people at Air America that think I'm kind of kooky for what I do on 9 11. So here's the strategy the strategy is, first of all, to understand that when you come with a great deal of energy and you say what you know to be the truth and I believe to be in fact the truth, that it scares the shit out of people. And it brings up this enormous fear because what you're saying is that there is not a benevolent mommy and daddy that is in fact taking care of them. And that throws people into an existential free fall and every single resource that they have available to them is gonna fight you because of that anomie, because of that intense feeling of helplessness and anxiety. How many of you have noticed some of the reactions when you push people's buttons like that? Okay. So let's be smart. We have a world to save here, okay? Now, the best strategy is exactly what we're doing here right now, which is why I'm so honored to be here. And that is, instead of impeachment, for example, I know we all want that, I like to replace it with three eyes. Okay? Investigation, indictment, mm -hmm. and incarceration. is let's get an investigation that is independent and honest and fair. Let me give you a little bit of ammunition. And that is not to say the buildings were blown up, not to say there wasn't a 757. We know there wasn't a 757. But let's not even say what's obvious that went into the Pentagon. Let's say there needs to be an independent investigation. And I'll give you some, some ammunition on that. Governor Keene, said to me, right to my face. Tim Romer said to me, right to my face. Obviously, Max Cleland said to me, right to my face. And Senator Bob Carey said to me, right to my face. There wasn't enough time and there wasn't enough money to do a more thorough investigation. Okay? Now, I went to, Governor, uh, to Senator Carey and I said, Senator, because he's associated with Air America. I said, Senator, are you still believing that there wasn't enough time or enough money to do an investigation? And he said, absolutely. I said, are you calling for a new investigation? He said, no, Richard, I'm going further than that. And this is Senator Bob Carey, who was one of the commissioners. He said, I am calling for a permanent 9-11 commission. And I said, I said, Senator, I said, Senator, is this public? Can I announce that on the air? And are you willing to come on the air and say that? And he said, yes. So I've been saving it for the right strategic time. Okay? So that's what we need. $14 million spent on the 9-11 Commission, thanks to this woman and a few of her friends. I mean, the name of my show is Cloud. Talk about Cloud. 
unbelievable what you guys did for this country. And they only wanted to spend $3 million, and they didn't want it at all. $64 million for Monica Lewinsky's affair with Bill Clinton and Whitewater. So, in, in closing, let's be centered about this. Let's be focused on the real task. And the real task is to not push people away. We already have momentum on our side. There's studies coming out all the time that the majority of people do not believe the 9-11 Commission report. Let's not push people further than we can. Let's get an investigation. Let's raise the level of awareness so that Dick Cheney, as they get close to the end of their term, that Dick Cheney and George Bush do not pull another one, blame it on the Iranians, attack Iran, and destroy what hopes we have of having a democracy, a country, and a future for our children. Thank you so much for everything. Beautiful points made, Richard, and uh, what a beautifully diverse evening, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Covered all the points. And, and I'm, I'm glad that Richard spoke about the uh, uh, situations when we are trying to share this information with people that uh, result in uh, certain tensions uh, that arise. <clears throat> and. You know, I, I think it's very important that we all hold in our hearts that what we really are, are purveyors of hope. Truth leads to hope. We cannot have uh, progress and uh, everything that we desire for the future, for our children, uh, without the very exact things that we have been discussing here tonight.